So you want to fly around like a little bee and you want to do it in either first person or third person. I can actually show you how to do it with both those options and a keyboard with the mouse along with the joystick. So let's get started. I am the Zaniac King. This is Zaniac King. Now, to get things started, I'm going to be using Mixamo and downloading this character here. I would recommend using your own character if you're publishing a game, just because I don't really know if you can use these commercially. However, I'm just going to use this for the tutorial. Now, I'm going to choose this flying animation here as well. Mixmo has a lot of free animations that you're able to use. I put in place because the character, I want to be able to move them in my script. And if you don't put in place, it makes things a little bit more complicated and you get unwanted movement. What I like about this is that you can adjust the arms, the legs, um, basically make them the type of superhero that you want to be or adjust it if you have wings and vice versa. I also put awareness because, you know, adds more lifeness to the character. Besides that, you download this, um, make sure to put without the skin and then put FBX for Unity and you could put 60 frames per second or 30 frames. I like to put 60 to basically keep it smooth. Once you get that downloaded, um, you're going to go into Unity, um, put your character into Unity along with the animations that you choose. Now, one important factor is these animations come in generic. You want to switch them over to humanoid. But before you do that, go back to your character here. And let me just get out of this screen real quick. Now for the character, you want to make sure he's humanoid, obviously. And then you want to go into uh, creating the avatar. So it will generate an avatar um, based off of the rig that your character has. Then you go back into the animation and you do the same thing. You go to humanoid, but this time you're going to go to copy from other avatar. The reason you do this is so the animations add up to your character as perfect as possible. Um, I've done this before with just generic humanoid characters and just had it do its own rig. Uh, I mean, its own avatar based off of this animation, but it didn't match up with the character correctly. So this avoids that mess. Um, now with poses, you don't really have to do this, but I do it just for demonstration. Um, you just put loop time, bake and pose, and bake and pose there as well, and apply. Um, you do this for the animations that you want to repeat over and over, like an idle animation, or like a walking animation, or flying animation, um, depending on how long you want to push down the button for. Cool thing is I switched the rotation, as you can see, um, for the front, it's the original rotation and body orientation. And then for the reversed, um, going backwards, I see this little trick off the offset. I just put it into the opposite direction. And what's cool about this is that you can have a first person controller and just set up the animations to where um, they rotate in the general direction that you want your character to face. Now for the flying, uh, what I'm going to do is duplicate this. That way I can edit the animation separately and just rename it to whatever you like. As you can see, I got uh, fly right, fly left, and these are rotated in the offset here uh, to reflect the direction that I want the character to go. Um, and as you can see in the animation here, uh, you have to have flight, X, and Y. 
and this is in the animation controller that I created for this character. Flight is a boolean, X and Y are floats, and you'll see in a moment why that's important. Um, I'm using a blend tree here, so this is gonna um, be simple. You just create a new blend tree. All right, so this is what it looks like when the blend tree is completed. Um, I put the 2D freeform directional. I put X and Y for the parameters. And as you can see, it matches up with the floats. Very important. Um, I also put the directions, um, the offsets here on the post X and post Y. This will just shows the directions that you want your character to go. And as you can see below, everything is matching up perfectly. And this is what the blend tree would look like if it's um, blank. So you just add your own animations here um, in the motion fields. And since I already did all that, I really don't need this blend tree here. Really pointless to have two of them, but just an example to show you the difference. Now, what I'm going to do next is add a idle state. Um, this is going to be where our character is just idle at the beginning. So we're going to set this as the default layer, of course. But first things first, got to name that animation so you know exactly um, where to connect it to. And since I got it as the idle, we just attach to the movement from the idle. And then from the movement, we go to the exit. You want to always make sure that you're exiting out of your animations. That way, you're not running them forever. Um, and of course, get that exit time, take that off, and make sure to put flight true. That's from the idle to the movement stage. And vice versa, when we're coming from here, you can leave the exit time so you know the animation will be done playing and then you just put flight false. That will be the indicator letting you know that this action is over. And for those who don't know how to create an animation controller, um, it's right here, just to show you. And that's it. Name it whatever you want. Now, I do like to use the old input system. Um, and this part of Unity version that I'm using is from 2020. Now, you could use a newer one if you'd like. It doesn't really matter. And you could adjust with the new input system, but you just have to adapt um, the script a little bit. One thing you gotta take note is when you're using keyboard and controller, let's say you wanna put it on PC and have both options, you want to go in here and make sure that the buttons are named the same. That way it doesn't complicate things for you. And you wanna make sure that it's corrected. Like right here with the mouse Y, you have to put invert and you'll see in a moment why. Um, when you're using both inputs for a controller and a mouse, um, it's just they don't register the same, obviously. <clears throat> Another thing with joysticks, you got to make sure that the joystick access is selected and uh, you put the right access as well. And as you can see with this mouse Y, I didn't have to invert it because it's different. Right here, though, with the invert, it has to go with the uh, with the vertical motion of the joystick because the joystick also runs on a um, different type of setup. 
um, when you're putting it into the script, that is. And as you can see, the fire two and fire three, you obviously have to put like button and then, you know, basically joystick button number two and one, whatever the placement is for you. Now, for anybody that's looking at where to find the old input system, you just got to go to the player settings. Scroll all the way down, and it's going to be right there. A lot of people will be using the new package, but the old one works for me, so why change it? So this is the example I was talking about. Controllers are more complicated to work with um, as far as programming. So, I mean, personally, that's my preference um, is to use a controller. So I learned how to do both. And when I released my first game, that was one of the struggles that I had to deal with. Now, as you can see on here, you need the animator, uh, rigid body, preferably continuous dynamic, capsule, collider, and um, on here, boost four ways. It's just boosting. Zany flyer is what really does the flying. The boosting, you don't have to worry about that. Boolean, fly faster. Um, I end up taking that off anyways. And right here, I took off the box colliders because I really didn't need those either. Now, here's the part that you've all been waiting for. Um, oh, one more script. Uh, flying camera. That's just the camera that I use. You can use any camera you want. All of these are pretty much independent of each other except the boosting script. You'll see that's connected. So right here on the flying camera, it's just a simple um, first person type of camera that I used and lets me look in all those directions as below. So copy that um, and then on here is the actual Zany flyer. Uh, this is where everything is taking place. Um, this is independent, so it doesn't need the flying camera or the boost or way script. Um, you could just copy the code here and just set it up for yourself. And you can adjust it however you'd like. So this is where uh, the boosting happens, and this one's reliant on the Zany flyer. Um, the reason I made it that way is so you can set up your own sprinting script uh, for your player character, however you'd like, and this won't be affecting that script or your movement. Um, and I just made it to where whenever flight is activated, um, that's when you're actually able to do the boosting. And that's all done in this section here. All right, hope you guys enjoyed the video, learned a lot. I know I had to go through the struggles to be able to show you what this is all about and how it's done. And I think the great thing about this community is that we all help each other out. So if you wanna take this script and change it up or do whatever you need to and help out somebody do something else incredible, that's entirely up to you. You can add a jetpack, whatever you like. So my gift to you guys, hope you enjoy. And if I know any other tips that can help out that don't require too much brain power, I'll be sure to share that with you guys. Till the next one, catch you later.